Very good morning to everyone. Um, welcome to our first uh, series of the uh, MMU3H um, talk. Okay, uh, the main objective of this uh, talk is basically, you know, to um, prepare you guys, all right, to, for the future, in fact, okay. And um, the topic of today would be um, electricity plus you. Okay, as to why um, we find that this uh, topic is very important, it is because we can't live without electricity today, okay? If you agree with me, um, you can drop a comment there, all right? So, um, without further ado, um, I would like to introduce also my a panel of speakers, um, or, or rather your, your, your guides today, okay? We will have uh, myself, um, Dr. Xiao, and then we will also have the next speaker, um, Dr. Ngu, and finally would be Dr. Fu, okay? So, Okay, I think um, enough said. So let us um, start. All right, let us get started with the topic of the day. All right, so let's see if you can um, see my screen. All right, so are you guys able to see my screen? If you can see my screen, the um, Perhaps you can um, help help me to do something, okay? By going to uh, menti.com, all right? Go to www.menti.com and um, key in the code, okay? And answer this um, simple question. Okay, answer this simple question. You go to this link, you key in the code 776111. You have to put a space in between. Okay, I just want to know um, what do you understand about the topic of today, All right? I think it's very important um, for us to know what do you know now so that we can, you know, um, engage better. All right, so we have the uh, first command of the day. Okay, moving charges. Interesting. What else? Electricity is power and um, anything else? Perhaps we can proceed when we have five comments, five responses. All right, so I think um, maybe it's still very early in the morning. All right, so we'll, we'll proceed not to worry. All right, another one, power. Okay, electricity is power about moving charges and all that. Um, I would say that uh, most of you got it uh, almost on point, but let us move to the real answer. All right, so let's move to my to our original plan. Right, so are you able to see my screen? Okay, great. Okay, so basically, all right, if you go if we go back to the fundamentals, I'm sure all of us know that uh, electricity is it, it all comes from a single charge, all right? And what is a charge? Okay, an electric charge is actually an atom, an atom, an, an atom which either lacks of electron or has excess amount of electron. So that's why it can be either positively charged or negatively charged. All right. So it's very it's very simple actually. All right. And I think uh, someone someone mentioned about moving 
uh, moving charges and all that. So that you actually got it right. Okay, you actually got it right. But um, the complete definition, okay, would be electricity is actually the set of uh, physical phenomenon associated with the presence. All right. First of all, they need to exist. Okay. Second of all, they need to um, either move or interact. Okay. Now I'm sure that um, you guys uh, have uh, encountered charge in real life, but later on I'll give you some scene scenario. Okay. So charge. How do we measure it? Okay. We measure it in in terms of coulomb. Right. So. And we usually represent it with the capital letter Q. Now, how do we move charge? We have to apply force, which is usually uh, which is measured in Newton. Right? And what else? You see these few lines, right? You see these few lines? They are always pointing from the positive charge to the negative charge and these few lines are actually electric field okay and they are measured in the form in terms of you take the force you divide by the charge you will get the electric field okay so yep so far this you look at the left side so these are all only half of electricity all right, what about the other half? So let's move on, okay? Now, if you move a charge from one point to another, okay, you need to do some work, right? It's just like if you want to move a box from one point to another point, you need to use some energy to do the work. And that is exactly what is meant by potential. Okay, and we usually use the symbol V to represent and it is measured in the form of voltage. Okay, now charge that is moving at a certain speed. Okay, that we call it as the flow of charge or the rate of flow of charge and it is measured in ampere. Okay, in fact, um, when you first learn about science, right? So you have the seven SI units, right? You have the what? You have the mass, you have the uh, time, you have the, what else you have? Uh, of course, one of it would be current, okay? And look, you take the voltage, divide with the current, okay? I'm sure you would have known what is the answer, all right? So if you know the answer, maybe you can um, type in the comment, okay? Um, but um, due to the time constraint, I'll straight away reveal the answer. You will get the resistance, right? So which is exactly Ohm's law, all right? So essentially, if people were to ask you to define what is electricity, you can just tell them that it is everything about charge. Okay, so I hope that um, this slide is able to um, help you, right, to see electricity in a better way. Although you cannot actually see an electricity flow, right? Okay, so this is just, you know, all what, whatever I have explained is just purely imaginary, right? So let's move on to something that you actually will feel, right? Maybe on a daily basis, who knows, right? So first thing first, okay? Now there are actually two forms of uh, electricity. You have the, to the left, you have the AC, right? To the left, you have the AC voltage. Okay, AC stands for alternating current, right? So that's why you can see that the voltage alternates from positive and then swing back to the negative within 20 milliseconds. And this is exactly the voltage that our utility, the TNB, actually they supply power to us at this voltage. Okay, that means the moment you 
connect your the electrical devices to any of your power point or any socket outlet in in your house okay um, assuming you are staying in a normal house okay not a big bungalow where you are running on three phase okay that is different but assuming that you are staying in a condo in, a, in an apartment or in a normal house most likely you will be supplied with 230 volts as the peak as the rms okay so this is alternating voltage alternating current that means what we get all right at the power point now there is the other form of electricity which is dc okay dc stands for direct current okay and don't be surprised that actually although we get the power in the form of ac but most of our devices most of our electrical devices such as our laptops um, our even our mobile phones right our smartphones um, our tvs right so they are all actually running on the dc right so these are the two uh, very common form of um, electricity in fact the only there are only two forms right ac or dc we move on all right to the next um, even more obvious example of electricity okay so if you can see what is on my screen can you please help to describe what it is or maybe you can comment um, and tell me what it is what do you see in this picture okay just just a simple comment right one word would do anyone okay if you okay right i am thankful that you type lightning instead of kl tower okay so um yeah actually this is kl tower okay but i'm thankful that you actually see this right so lightning is actually um a form of electricity okay that we actually um are lucky all right lucky or not lucky it depends on you to see it almost on a daily basis in malaysia especially right because malaysia is one of the countries right in the world which has uh, among the highest uh, number of lightning per area in the world right which is very interesting but it could also be pretty uh, dangerous okay so more on this will be um this discussed in uh, probably maybe in our second talk who knows all right so just stay tuned with us okay what else i'm sure you have played with this device before right so i think you should know what it is which is the when the graph generator okay you touch on it and then your hair spikes up so this is actually a phenomenon of electrostatic, okay, electrostatic. Okay, so, yeah, so you can see electricity. Now I think you are slowly able to um, understand, right, to appreciate. In fact, if you are in a very cold room and, you, and your hand is about to touch the doorknob, sometimes you feel there's a spark. Sometimes you feel suddenly your fingers felt a sharp pain. Okay, that is actually due to electro, electro, electrostatic, static electricity. Okay. All right. So uh, enough about the what is electricity. Let us move on to the when. All right. A little bit, a little great glimpse on what is the history of uh, electricity. Okay. Um, do not be surprised if I were to tell you that our first encounter with electricity actually happens like 2750 BC, right? Which is about 3000 years ago. And they actually see this, right? If you do not know what is this, this is actually an electrical eel, an electric fish, in fact, right? So, but back then they don't, the human back then they don't recognize that this is actually a form of electricity 
they just they are just too mesmerized that uh, this fish can actually produce up to you know 800 volts one ampere kind of uh, current okay so this is its uh, self-defense mechanism in fact and we fast forward to about 1000 or 2000 years later that is when uh, humankind start to um, officially recognize static electricity which is when you take two objects okay of the opposite ends of the triple electric series you rub them against each other you can actually produce static electricity you can try this at home right and fast forward to 100 years ago we have the famous the infamous uh, war of the currents okay ac against dc right i strongly invite all of you to go to youtube type this thing the great war of the currents and you will be able to um, follow a very interesting battle okay between the ac which is uh, the ac proponent uh, Nik nikola tesla against thomas edison which who, who was trying to champion a uh, dc eventually um, at that point of time dc won for a while okay but in the long run as you may know okay ac actually took the upper hand okay so but moving forward moving ahead all right you take another you give the world another 20 years or 30 years um, down the line okay don't be surprised that uh, we will be living in the world of smart grid so what is a smart grid smart grid is actually an electrical grid okay which actually includes um, a variety of operation and energy measures okay what we have now is only a normal power grid but the difference with smart grid is that you would be having smart meters instead of the meters that we have now so what is a smart meter okay how we keep track of the electricity and all that okay it actually allows us to know instantly okay at that point of the at that point of time how much energy we produce and how much energy we use right it's pretty interesting right it is actually in fact real time okay and in the world of smart grid we will be moving away from the traditional conventional you know coal fired power plant okay which is um some people call it as the brown power or the dirty energy right so we want to go clean we want to go sustainable so that is why we be moving towards uh, wind energy we'll be moving towards solar energy right that's the time where uh, most of our rooftop would be installed with um, solar panels so that we can also generate electricity and if we could not finish or if we could not fully use what we have generated we can also export and sell the power back to the tnb via the smart grid okay so so far um, i have covered with you okay what is electricity okay and when is electricity right but the next question to be answered would be how is electricity produced in the mass in the massive scale okay and how do we actually use electricity right and finally all right how much do we have to pay for electricity right so these two big topics will be covered by our next speaker which is uh, dr ngu and then dr fu right so dr ngu i think um, i'll hand over the session to you thank you All right, Dr. Ngu. Uh, thank you, Dr. Xiao. Right, so now it is my turn to share with you on the uh, how the electricity is being uh, used in our home. Right, so can you see my screen? Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen boys and girls. So thank you, Dr. Sell, for the brief but very clear introductions to the basic of electricity. 
So now I would like to invite you to do a simple quiz to test your understanding on the electricity on the Kahoot, right? So it is to see how much you have learned from Dr. Xiao. Okay, so can you, right? So I will share you with the uh, Kahoot team to join the quiz. Okay. It is eight seven eight eight nine five six. Okay, so I'll be waiting. Maybe we'll get around uh, five or six uh, player to join in. Then uh, we shall start the quiz. Okay, so far we have C3. Any more? It is just a simple quiz, right? Uh, around five or six questions only. Okay, so we see Ah, we see Jung Tong, we see Abdu, Imran. Any more? Ah, we have someone with the nickname of Haha. -ha. Okay, I think without uh waiting, wasting our time, then we should start our quiz. Get ready. It is about electricity. Yeah, first question, what is electricity? Four, three, two, one. Okay. Right, so it's an interesting result. Yes, the answer should be it is the flow of electrical power or charge. So now let's move on. Yeah, okay, haha, -ha score in the first place. Okay, moving on, true or false? We have two types of uh, electricity, static electricity and current electricity. Is it correct or it is incorrect? Okay, so now we see that there are two person answer the question correctly. Yes, we have uh, two main types, static and current electricity. So now let's move on to question three. Okay, now Imran become the champion. Okay, question three, lightning is a kind of electricity, true or false? Okay, yeah, lightning is a kind of electricity. Right, so we'll move on. Yeah, okay, now haha, -ha, become the champion again. So question number four, electric use can generate an electrical charge of up to take the nearest reading. 100 volt, 300 volt, 500 or 1000. Okay. 
this is the 500 volt is the average right uh, voltage that can be generated by the electric eels. So now move on. Yeah, Taha still maintained in the first place. Right, so electrical machine that producing the electrical energy is called as motor, battery, transformer, or generator. Okay. Yeah, well done. Yes, it is called as generator. Now, the last question. So let's see. Wow, Haha -ha still man managed to stay in the first place. Okay, last question. Get ready. Which electrical appliance that draws the most electricity? Refrigerator, the lighting, our air conditioner, or TV? Okay, yeah, the answer should be uh, air conditioner because it draws most power if compared to the refrigerator. So now let's see who is the champion. Okay, third place is A. Second place, Imran. Okay, the champion is. Ta da! Ah, haha. -ha. Okay. Wow, we have run out, Jung Tong and Richard. Well done, everyone. So now we shall back to our uh, slides on the presentations. Okay. All right. Can you see the, uh, sorry? Yep. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay, now can you see my uh, screen? Yes. Okay, so now move on. I will tell you how the electricity can get to your home, right? You might wonder. Hmm, how the electricity is generated and how it gets to your house. So now I will explain to you in brief on how electricity gets to your house, right? So first, you will see that the electricity, it is uh, made at the generating stations, right? You can see a big building here. So we call this as the power plant, right? So this power plant basically is a of compromised by a huge generator. So in the power plant, we can use different resources as mentioned by the uh, total cell just now, okay? It can be either wind, a coal, natural gas, or water to generate the electricity. So generator is the electrical machines that do the jobs to convert them into the electrical energy, right? Then this electricity, it will be sent through transformer, okay? You can see that there is one device uh, placed on the ground. This is the transformer. So the electricity from the power plant, it will be sent through the transformer to increase the voltage for the long distance travel, right? So this electrical charge, it will go through this high voltage transmission line that will stretch across the whole country. So the transmission line, it can be as long as few hundred kilometers, right? It is very, very long. So after travel through this high voltage transmission line will come to another transformer, okay, in the substations. So for the second transformer, it will do the jobs to lower down the voltage so that it can be sent through a smaller power line, 
right? We call this smaller power line as distribution line. So electricity will travel through the distribution lines and come to your neighborhood. And smaller transformer, right? We call it as a pole mounted transformer. It will be used to further reduce the voltage to make the power safe to be used in our homes. So this smaller transformer, it may be, it may be either pole mounted or sometimes you may see them sitting on the ground, right? So they are in a big green boxes. We call it as a pet mount transformer. So now electricity will get connected to your house and you'll pass through a meter that measures how much electricity you use. And the TMB uh, staff, they will always come to our house uh, almost every month to take the readings through the meter, okay? So now the electricity, it will go to the service panel in your house. Usually you can find the device panel either in the living room or sometime for the new houses, you may also find another separate service panel upstairs, right? So inside this service panel, the breakers or the fuses, it will produce the wire inside your house from being overloaded. So boys and girls, remember that never touch the service panel, right? It is only to be operated by your parents or a professional. So now the electricity travels through the wires inside the walls to the outlets and switches all over your house. So you can see there, say someone sitting in the living room watching the TV, okay? So why electricity? So how are we going to use this electricity? We can use it to drive different types of uh, home appliance, right? What is the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning, boys and girls? Getting your handphone, turn off the air conditioner, or you're turning off the fan, right? So for younger things, I guess handphone will be the first things that they do, right? Okay, sorry. There's something wrong here, hold on. Okay, so, right, for one good thing, so I guess handphone is the most important things in their life, right? This is the first thing they are going to grab when they wake up in the morning. But we can't live without the smartphone chargers, isn't it? Okay, so do you know that the charger, it needs a DC supply, right? When you're plugging things into the outlet in your house, you actually, you don't get DC. Remember that our household, actually the outlets, it comes with AC, right? Just now Dr. Sell mentioned TMB giving us the electricity in the form of alternating current. So, which is around 230 volts. <clears throat> but then, Passing through the handphone or the mobile phone charger, the output of this phone charger will be just around 5 to 10 volts in DC. So if your mobile phone is under the normal charge, right, it will use around 3 to 10 watts only. Okay. So if the normal charge, around 3 to 10 watts. However, if your phone it is a fast charge type, then it can be as high as 100 watts, right? So actually, we should call this uh, mobile phone charger as power adapter rather than mobile phone charger. As the mobile phone, it will do the charging part inside the device itself, right? So right now, 
you might be following the uh, our talks using the laptop, perhaps, right, for your information. Typical power usage for a laptop, it is in the range of 50 to 100 watts only. All right. So it is quite energy saving, right? If you look at the laptop, it is only using five, uh, sorry, 50 to 100 watts. But this doesn't mean that boys and girls, you can simply leave our devices on for the whole days since the power consumption is low. If you do that, it is actually will lead to the wastage of power. So as our laptops do consume some power, even though it is put under the sleep or hibernating mode. All right, this one you have to remember. So now, how about this one, right? Thermal pot. And I believe almost every house is having this one in your kitchen, isn't it? Right? So do you know how much is the power consumption during the boiling and while well, keeping it warm at certain temperatures? For a thermal pot with a capacity of four to six liters, right? For this range of the thermal pot, it will draw about 700 until 900 watts. Okay, 700 to 900 watts while boiling, right? When it is boiling up the water, it will take 700 to 900 watts. But the approximate average power consumption will keep warm at 98 degrees Celsius, right? If this one, then it will use up around 49 watts per hour. And if it keep warm at around 80 degrees Celsius, the power consumption will be around 35 watts per hour. And if you choose it to keep warm functions at 60 degrees, okay, 60 degrees Celsius, then it will use around 23 watts per hour, right? So now we'll know that actually it will consume very quite a high power when boiling up the water. And even though it is keeping warm at certain temperatures, it still will draw some energy, right, from our house. Okay, so now not to forget in the water heater, yeah, water heater in our bathroom. Actually, do you know that water heater is one of the home appliances that draw a lot of energy, right? So typical power usage for this device, it is around 3,500 watts, okay, until the maximum of 550. Oh, sorry, 5,500 watts, okay? However, it doesn't really contribute much in our monthly electric uh, bill, isn't it? Unless you spend 30 minutes or even longer in the bathroom, then it will be another story. Now, move on. So let's take a look on the iron, right? So do you remember that in those old days, we actually see our mom using the dry iron, right? Which is really, really heavy. But actually the power consumption for the dry irons, it is quite low, right? Compared to the modern steam iron. So for the uh, steam iron, okay, steam iron, it will basically consumes around 3,000 watts. But the dry iron, it is almost wanted, right? Almost wanted, which is 1,200 watts. Okay, All right. So now move on. How about the PlayStations, right? Boys and girls, do you have this device uh, in your house? Right, so this is the PlayStation PS5. For your information, it uses only 50 to 200 watts. 
right? Pretty, pretty low, right? Just around 50 to 200 watts. But it doesn't mean that we should spend hours in gaming as it is bad to our health. Well, what else of kitchen appliance that you can think of? Uh, electric stove or electric uh, oven, right? So for me, I think the uh, electric oven will be more common, right? Compared to the electric stove. So perhaps some of you are baking cookies while listening to our talks. So why do we need electricity? Okay, why electricity? So basically, the electric oven, it will convert the electrical energy, okay? It will convert the electrical energy to the heat. So we call it in thermal, okay? So electric oven, it convert electrical energy to the thermal energy to cook our food, to bake our cookies, and do all, all, all kinds of the baking, right? So for your information, most electric ovens, you will draw the power between 1,800 to 2,500 watts, right? If you are using the built-in type, right, it will consume slightly higher power, which can be up to 3,500 watts. So now from these slides, we can basically see that our ions and also the electric ovens, it will do the job by converting the electrical energy to the thermal energy. Okay, so now we have the refrigerator, isn't it? We have refrigerator in our kitchens. So actually for the refrigerator, electrical energy will first get converted into the mechanical energy, okay? So it will first converting the electrical energy to the mechanical energy, right? So this is done by the device they call as motor, right? We call this conversion of energy from electrical to mechanical. So this device, we call it as a motor. So the mechanical energy will then get converted into the thermal energy. Okay. So from this process, it is done, done by a, a device, we call it as a compressor. Right, there is a compressor in our refrigerator. Okay, so maybe now you may try. Okay, you try to rub your hands, do it quickly, maybe for one 30 seconds to one minute. Then actually, you can slowly feel the heat on your hands, isn't it? So, actually, this is the action of converting the mechanical, which is the motions, right, mechanical energy into the heat. Okay, so for the single door refrigerator, usually it consumes uh, around uh, 100 watts. But for the uh, double door uh, refrigerators, it, it will draw slightly higher uh, power, which is around 400 watts, right? So you have to purchase your refrigerators according to your own needs. So now let's move on to the next item, which is the last item that I'm going to share with you. It is the air conditioner unit. So if your house is having the one horsepower air conditioning, this one, the power consumption, it is around 746 watts. If it is 1.5 horsepower, Okay, then the power consumption will be around 1,119 one, one, 1, watts. If it is two horsepower, so you should expect a higher power consumption from this device. It is around 1,492 watts. Okay, so 
actually you will pay for a price for lower temperatures. So say for example, when you set a lower temperature around 16 degrees, right? Wow, it is as cold as in the Nick Highland or, or Cameron Highlands. But actually your air conditioner compressor, it needs to work longer, which means it will draw more power. On the other hand, if you increase the temperature from 16 degrees Celsius, say to around 25 degrees Celsius, right? So under these conditions, the compressor basically will work for much less time. So leading to the less power consumptions. So once the de desired temperature is reached, the compressor inside the uh, compressor of the air conditioner, it will stop functioning. And at this time, only the air conditioning fans is working. And the compressor will restart once the thermostat detects the increase in the temperature. So, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, things to remember is that the power consumption of the air conditioner, it doesn't just depend on the temperature that you set, right? There are many other factors. It depends on the star rating, okay? In the market, we can see one star, two star, until five star. Okay, so it depends on the star rating, the outside temperature, the hour of usage, the size of the room, number of the people in the room, and insulation in the room, and etc. Right? So if you are setting the air conditioning at the low temperature, but then you are covered up yourself using a blanket, it is not only unhealthy, it is also purely wastage of energy. So increasing the temperature of your air conditioner and keep it at moderate level, not only conserve power, but also help to save on the electricity bills. Okay, so now, who to pay? When we talk about the electricity bill, who should we pay our monthly bill? So you can see the first logo here. So this is the utility company in Peninsula, Malaysia. So in Peninsula, Malaysia, we will pay to Tenaga National Berhad. In short, we just call it as a TMB, isn't it? Right, we call it as a TMB. And the second logo here, it is Salawat Energy Berhad. Previously, it is known as Sesco. So from the name itself, we know that this is a utility company in Salawat. And the last one, SESB. This is Sabah Electricity Sandrian Berhad. So this is the utility company in Sabah. Okay, so that's all for my part on how the electricity comes to our house, why we need the electricity, and who to pay. Okay. So I will end my presentations and pass it to the next speaker, Dr. Fu. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Fu. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fu. Let me share my slide. All right. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, once again, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Mu. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, welcome to this session that explains how to calculate the electricity bill. Dr. Xiao has made a very clear introduction to the electricity. On the other hand, Dr. Mu has explained how electricity is delivered to our house and about the electricity consumption. So in this session, we will dive in and have a closer look. Before I begin, I would like to remind that there will be a link to be posted at the comment box. So please fill it up if you wish to receive an insert. Okay, now let's begin. 
every month the TNP technician comes to our house to read the meter and then generate the bill for us. And then we have to pay the bill. But a side note before we proceed, all these figures in the slides are available at the TNP website. That is www.tnb.com.my. Okay, now the TNP bill contains numerous items that need some understanding. Let us go through the ones that directly affect how much we pay. Here we focus on five different uh, important items. Okay, there are this uh, item 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay. Let's go through them one by one. So first, uh, the item 16, that is called the factor pro rata or pro rated rate, pro rated factor. So this means that if our meter is read every month, then the pro rated factor will be one and the calculation will be easy. Okay. So next it is item 70, the tariff block our total electricity consumption is divided into a few blocks that are called tariff blocks. Each block is charged with a different rate. The tariff block is measured in the unit of kilowatt or kWa. So here's the meaning of kilowatt hour. One kilowatt hour is equivalent to 3,000 600 kilojoules, uh, in bracket, we usually call it a kJ, or 3.6 megajoules, mJ, all right? Now let's look at item 18, prorated block. This item is related to both item 16, prorated factor, and also item 17, the tariff block. So what does this item 18 uh, block pro rata mean? Here is how the pro rated block is calculated. The pro rated block equals to pro rated factor multiplied by the tariff block. In short, item 18 equals to item 16 multiplied by item 17. That's simple. Next, here comes the most important factor in the calculation, which is the rate, cut out. Different tariff block is charged with different rate. The rate for the first block is the cheapest. And the rate goes higher in the subsequent block. In the bill, we see that the first block, the first 200 unit, is charged at 21 0.8 cent per unit. Okay, the subsequent hundred unit is charged at 33.4 cent per unit, and so on. You see that the rate goes higher as we move up the tariff blocks. This means that the less electric city we consume, the less we pay, and vice versa. The more we consume, the more we pay. Finally, item 20 shows the amount that we have to pay. It shows the amount for each block, summing all the amounts together, gives us the total amount that we have to pay DMB in that month. All right. So let's look carefully at the example presented in the bill. This is a simple example with the pro rated factor being one. As a result, the calculated pro rated blocks are the same as the tariff block. In this example, 730 kilowatt hour has been consumed in one month. Okay. The user has to pay 300 and two ringgit and 78 cents. That's quite expensive, isn't it? The question is, 
what if the TNB technician comes after one month? Let's say he comes only 45 days later instead of the normal 30 days. That means that our meter is read only 45 days later. The electricity that we have consumed in 45 days is definitely much larger than that of 30 days. Does it mean that we have to pay more? Not necessarily. It will be prorated. Okay. In this example, our meter is read after a period of 45 days. 45 divided by 30 is 1.5. So remember the item 16, the prorated factor, the prorated factor is now 1.5. As a result, the prorated block is the tariff block multiplied by 1.5. Okay, you see that all this tariff block will now be multiplied by 1.5 instead of 1.0 now. At the first look, the amount charged for each block becomes larger. For example, it is now 65 ringgit and 40 cents as compared to the previous 43 and 60 cents, right? It becomes more expensive for this block now. Does it mean that we have to pay more? Not necessarily. Wait, remember that in both examples, the total consumed unit is 730 kilowatt hour. With these calculations, we find that the total amount to be paid actually becomes less, which is now about 260 ringgit as compared to about 300 ringgit in the previous example when the prorated rate is one. Okay. With the prorated factor, we now pay less. Nevertheless, the ultimate question is, how can we consume less electricity so that we can pay less? In order to answer this question, perhaps we need to first ask ourselves, what electrical appliances do we use? How much power do they consume? And the question for the present, what electrical appliances are being turned on now? Well, as you are watching this video now, your computer is being turned on. Since you have an internet connection, then perhaps your Wi-Fi is on. And most likely the light is on too. And maybe you have turned on a fan or an air conditioner too. But how much power do they consume? We can look at some examples. For example, suppose a refrigerator uh, consumes 1,200 watt. The fridge is on 24 hours a day. In doing the calculation based on the lowest rate of the tariff law in the previous example, we find that we need to pay roughly 6 ringgit a day to keep the fridge running. Remember that this is per day, not per month. Next, if we turn on the air conditioner seven hours a day, we may need to pay approximately one ringgit and 10 cents a day. And if we use a washing machine an hour a day, then we need to pay 20 cents per day and so on. This is through the understanding of how much power each electrical appliances consume. In fact, Dr. Mu has already explained this in detail, so I will not go into details. What I would like to mention here is that there are also some best practices recommended to reduce electricity consumption. For example, we need to switch them off when they are not in use. We may want to replace some old electrical appliances with newer and more energy saving models. Observe the energy efficient labor when you buy new electrical appliances. This labor is now available in many appliances such as air conditioners, refrigerators, and so on. 
If possible, go for the one with five star labor. This means that it is the most efficient in energy consumption. All right, with this, we hope that we have guided you on reading the electricity bill and that you have become more aware of the electricity consumption. That's all for this session. Thank you very much. By the way, remember that there is a link at the command box, so please fill it up if, if you wish to receive an easel. Very much. So over to you, Dr. Xiao. All right. Um, thank you, Dr. Fu, for the um, sharing as well as Dr. Ngu. Uh, all right. So I think uh, it has been a, a rather long day for all of us. Um, I hope that um, you guys have benefited from the talk and have been enjoying the um, talk. All right. So we have started with uh, what is electricity and then um, how it is being generated, why uh, why do we need them, and then eventually um, how much do we use on a daily basis, all right? So I think we have covered quite a full spectrum of electricity, all right? Um, so, uh, okay, back to the comments. Um, I, I see that um, there is a link there, all right? If you have enjoyed our show and we would, we would like to receive an e-certificate for your participation in our talk, Okay, please click the, the link posted in the comment box and um, you can fill up the form, all right? So, um, if you also have any other topics that you would like to um, know more about, especially anything under the sun, anything under um, the realms of electrical engineering, okay, electricity or whatever. In fact, um, next Saturday, um, we will be having another session on lightning. All right, I, as I mentioned to you, lightning is a very a beautiful, but also could also be a very dangerous event. All right, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you do not want to miss out on any of our future talks and um, um, series like this, okay, please uh, smash the uh, like button um, of our Facebook group, uh, of our Facebook page, as well as the YouTube page. All right. Um, yeah, if you miss out any part of our um, talk, okay, you can feel free to replay, okay? Feel free to replay, feel free to re-watch any section of the video. And if you have any further question, just drop your question on the comment box. All right, we might not be able to reply to you now due to the time constraint. We do not want to disturb your Saturday, all right? But uh, if you have any comments, just leave it on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page, and we will be more than happy, all right, to respond to you. All right, so I think um, it has been a long day. So I, I, I enjoy my time in sharing with you. And I believe Dr. Fu and Dr. Ngu have also enjoyed their time to, you know, um, share our knowledge, um, to give back to the community. All right, so I look forward to see you in our next talk. And with that, um, thank you very much and goodbye. Take care.